Okay, I'm going to start this by saying if I spend a bunch of time looking just shy of the lens, it's. I think I'm going to try doing that for a while until I get a little more comfortable with um, recording these things. Uh, but I just wanted to give a quick update. I went to Stanford uh, Dermatology yesterday and got some answers and some more questions. But first things first, my face today, as you can tell, it's not that bad um, at all. I mean, it looks pretty dang good comparatively. Um, but the redness and the burning, she thinks, is rosacea. And... I'm just learning a little bit about it, and I was actually kind of happy when she said it, and that sounds terrible, but it wasn't like some devastating diagnosis, and I was like, oh, so there's a cure for that. She's like, no, there's some creams and laser treatments, and the creams are usually not covered, which they're not. $600 out of pocket. And lasers, I have to now look into that and whether or not that will trigger a relapsing polychondritis flare. <clears throat> so... Oh well, but at least I know what it is. And um, it actually also went into uh, the texture. And I, I I had nice skin my whole life and smooth. And people always said, oh, you know, you got such great skin. But I noticed in the last few months, there's like a rippling and texture that's just, I don't know, growing along my jawline. I didn't know what that was about. All the red that was just constantly coming and going. And then on top of it, I don't know if you can really tell, but what I used to have is just cute little freckles um, all over my face. They're now starting to join together and, let's see if I can get a glare off of that, and look a little more like liver spots. And there's the newest one is starting right here. These two I developed in the last uh, six months. And then there's one starting right up here. And... Though there's no definitive answer, it looks like it's being caused by the chemotherapy drug and the immunosuppressive drugs that I am on for the RP. Because um, my arms, you know, I lost all my color. I was brown island skin, you know, most of my life. And being bed and housebound for this many years, I pretty much just went white. And then in the last, like, three months, my arms start getting color again, and I'm not going outside. So, still a little questionable as to why it's doing that, but it, it looks like it could be caused by that. Um, so I wanted to address that, you know, there's some patches on my forehead that my husband noticed are starting, and it's just, like, liver spots all over at 45. It's cool. Anyway, second thing I was going to address is my teeth, because I have made reference to them. My perfect, perfect, perfect curly whites. Yeah. I started off with a bad lottery for the teeth. Uh, genetically, um, the people of Guam have weaker tooth structures. So I was born with that as half my genetics. So they were a little problematic growing up. Um, and then when I had the coma in 04 and all the medications that were pumped into me, it just like wrecked my whole mouth and I had to have four root canals and three teeth pulled. And, uh, yeah, and then in the last four years, five, well, I don't even know, recent history, um, I also got diagnosed with Sjogren's Syndrome, which is an autoimmune disease that affects um, your, um, what do you call it, your moisture-producing glands. And um, so I get dry mouth all the time, all, all, all the time. And it's painful and it just sucks. And it is causing all my teeth to... Uh, rot the rest of the way out. And I have two in my mouth that have broken in half le lengthwise. Not that way. Um, and I can't just easily go to a dentist when I'm on all these medications and when my system is compromised. But hopefully I can get into Stanford's uh, dental school and where they actually do treat problematic autoimmune disorder cases. I'm just not sure if they're going to be 
willing to mess with me. Kind of like the lung meeting where basically the, the whole team got together, <laughs> met, and said, no, it's going to be worse if we try to do that. And I just got the good luck. We're sorry. And hopefully that won't happen with my mouth, but um, I got to do some more testings to find out how fast my lungs and heart are now deteriorating. And depending on what comes of that, I mean, there might not even be the time or the want at that point to go through all of that if if this is moving real fast. Uh, I'm not going to waste any money and downtime. Um, so yeah, that's uh, skin and teeth. Uh, the thing I wanted to address that I didn't quite think she was on spot yet was I don't know that I was communicating properly about the burning uh, of my feet, my hands, and my knees. Um, she did say that the blotchiness on my legs and knees uh, is called levido reticularis, and I no longer wear short skirts if I don't have knee-high socks or uh, thigh-high socks on or thigh-high boots on because my knees now permanently look terrible. Um, but she did say that that was part of the other, that's a vasculitis issue. And, you know, I already had, um, uh, Raynaud's on my fingers and toes and I had, uh, boy, my brain's just sucking. I forget. I forget the other one. <laughs> There's so many. And so anyway, she, I don't think I was explaining it quite right because she's running a test for something that's kind of, uh, most places aren't testing for it. Um. But she did tell me that the triggers are cold and wet. And I did try to explain to her that I'm never cold, nor am I ever wet. I had struggled to self-care. Therefore, I am never in a shower or in a bath for an extended period of time where this could be triggered. And it happens all the time. So I don't think her idea of what she thinks it is is going to turn out to be quite right yet. But I really liked her. And she was young, so she still had kind of a hunger, it seemed, like, for medicine. And she wasn't burnt out. And, um, yeah, I liked her a lot. Uh, so, hopefully we'll get, you know, process of elimination going. Um, and in case you didn't know, autoimmune diseases are when your own body attacks itself. Uh, it, it recognizes whatever body part as a foreign object and tries to kill it. And if you have a system that is susceptible to, let's say, one autoimmune disease, like you got lupus. That means your whole body could get any of them, just because it means your system is set up for, you know, your body to not quite read its signals properly. So that, if it seems like every other day I'm coming up with all the new diagnoses, well, that's because they run uh, co concurrent is that how you say it with the primary and uh, my primary is relapsing polychondritis which apparently is not too common as a primary and then I just am racking up a slew of secondaries but it did make it more complicated to diagnose because I had so many systems that were struggling um, so yeah just a quick update just thought I'd let you guys know what's going on with my skin and all that good stuff. So, uh, wish me luck. I have my walking test and lung function test uh, next week uh, to see how much has changed since the last time and hopefully get a better idea of what the future will look like. Oh, wait. Watch. Watch. You want to see? Oh, oh, are we going to change right on camera? There we go. Huh. Can you see my ear? Can you see it? This happened once, right in front of a doctor while I was trying to explain the symptom. It did it right in front of her while I was talking, and she was fascinated. So I thought, hey, I feel it starting. Let's film it. And there it goes down my cheek. But I can definitely, it's, the burning started right here, and then you can kind of feel it moving across a little. But anyway, yeah, that's, oh, there goes the chin too. Ta-da, there's my magic trick. Skin colors, yay! Okay, bye.